Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, today we're having a look at a gun that's been around for a really long time. It's one of the smallest pocket guns I've ever seen, which is the P32 by kel -Tec. Is this something I would actually carry for self-defense? Well, we're going to talk about that in a bit more in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thanks for being with us today. If this is your first time coming to the channel, or if you've been watching our videos before and you just haven't had the chance before now and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can locate that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your computer screen there, or if you're on a mobile device, you can just scroll down below the video and hit subscribe that way. It's a simple thing that helps out a whole lot, and we really appreciate it. So, the P32 by kel -Tec. Now, once again, this gun's been around for a long time. Um, so there's nothing new here, but this is something that, you know, I haven't really gotten that far into kel in my lifetime because, honestly, everybody I ever heard discuss kel said that, well, they just aren't good guns, you know, they're cheap, whatever. And, you know, some of what have I've been told, it can be true. But does the gun actually operate? Is it safe? Um, you know, it... it can you use it? Is it functional? Well, that's a different story altogether. And we'll get into that. But let's just start off the way we normally do with a little comparison and uh, as far as size. And we'll use, well, really the other 32 that I've carried before for that. Um, the Bread Tomcat used to be my go to gun to drop in the pocket. And you can see that they've got, as far as overall size, you know, once again, we're not comparing specific features and dimensions just kind of overall size now the bread is a bit thicker and the bread is heavier for sure but if i'm used to carrying this in my pocket obviously carrying this in my pocket shouldn't be a big deal and you know the idea here anyway is these are as i said pocket guns and while you may holster them we'll talk about that more in the carry section uh, for me, this is the kind of thing that's probably going to end up in a sticky holster directly in the pocket anyway. All right, we're going to jump right into the features here. But before we do, we're going to take a moment to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of the P32 by kel -Tec. Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough. So as usual, we're going to safety check our gun, get the magazine out here, and let you see that there is... Nothing in the chamber, and we are just as safe as we can be here. This is a seven-round magazine, so you get seven plus one with the little firearm, which isn't bad for a little small gun here. You've got kind of a little, we're starting at the top, of course, and you got a little nub here on the front for your sight, and not much going on on the rear, and that is your sight picture. Uh, but as I've talked about many times, and I will reiterate here, with a little tiny gun like this, you know, short barrel shooting a cartridge like the 32 ACP cartridge, my experience has been if you are super extremely close up, um, you can get some accuracy with this and you'll get little, you know, actual holes in paper. But over any distance at all, these rounds begin to tumble. I guess what I'm saying overall here is, is that really precision sights are kind of pointless on a firearm like this because it's meant to be used extremely close up. Um, you know, precision shooting is not something you're going to be doing with this. I mean, if you're just out practicing, having fun, you know, you can play around the sights. But, I mean, in real-world situation, um, they're not going to be much help. You got some serrations here on the back. And trigger guard is actually not too bad. I've got big fingers, and so I've always got concerns about, you know, getting my finger inside um, the front here of the trigger guard. One of the reasons that I, you know, showed you the the Beretta in the beginning, one of the reasons why I liked it so much years ago is when I picked it out is because it's got a pretty big trigger guard and I can get my finger in this one really easy. And that's just one of the things that I like about it. And it's got a little bit fatter grip and I've got bigger hands. But having said that, I can still get my finger in here pretty good so it's not too bad. Um, we'll talk more about the trigger um, whenever I go into the range section here, but just so you'll see, you can see that there's a hammer there. And a lot of people try and say this is a striker fire gun, but it's not. 
it is a um, internal hammer and it's double action only and I'll show you that um, it's currently in the half cock position and so from here if I pull the trigger you'll see the hammer come back and then drop and then disappear and of course I have to recycle the slide to move that back to the half cock position and then of course your trigger you get a little bit of take up here and then it's a five pound trigger but you feel every bit of this coming back it's very consistent all the way through the pull okay and then it's a nice break there at the end but you feel all of that five pounds that to me that's good because on a little gun like this um let's say that someone carries it in their pocket and they don't have anything over it they don't have a sticky or anything it's just a, a, truly a pocket gun well you don't want this to just you know you don't want that trigger getting manipulated accidentally or any other way you want to make sure it takes some intent to get that trigger back right and so i think that's a uh, a very safe way to carry You've got your magazine release right here on the front of the grip. You've got some pretty good texturing here on both sides. And then, of course, you've, once again, once your magazine goes in, it lines up with the very bottom here for that little smooth bottom piece. So it's a pretty simple setup. Like I say, it's designed to um, be a close quarters um, pocket gun. It's very simple. There's nothing fancy about it, but there's not supposed to be. Okay, so let's talk about the range. This is something I have a lot of experience with. Um, the 32 cartridge, I started shooting when I was pretty young. And I was pretty amazed at what little distance it takes for this cartridge to start becoming very unstable in the air. Now, <clears throat> this P32 is no different than any other 32 I've ever shot as far as that phenomenon. Um, the one thing I can tell you about this little gun versus, you know, say the, the Tomcat is I definitely feel more. Now the 32 is not a very powerful cartridge, but you can, you can definitely feel it through this gun. This is a much lighter gun. Of course, this is a polymer frame and uh, the little Beretta here is, is got a, a pretty thick, you know beefier grip and it's a metal gun and i really don't feel much of the energy of the cartridge in my hand that's one thing i've always liked about this um you feel a little bit of more of that in here but this gun is so much lighter it's actually a lot more comfortable to carry than the little beretta and it's so much lighter and so much easier to carry that it seems worth it to me to exchange feeling a little more of the energy in my hand if I actually shoot the gun. Of course, the grip, you know, on the kel is also a little bit of an issue for me. Um, now, once again, this is not designed, you know, to be a gun for any kind of a beefy hand, big fingers whatsoever. But I can get basically one finger on the grip. And there's a lot of guns I have that are close to that. But, you know, with the bread, I can get two full fingers on the grip. And to me, that's a big difference in stability. But once again, you could still do this. I don't feel like I'm going to drop the gun or anything just because it's one full finger that's wrapped around. It just feels a little awkward for me because my hands are bigger. Um, but as far as reliability, um, you know, I wasn't disappointed at all with the kel -Tec. Um I got to shoot this gun a long time ago when it first came out, and I can tell you um, I have shot round after round after round through the P32. And it's been surprisingly, to me, I was shocked at how reliable it is. And, um, you know, as far as ammunition, um, you know, I've got some of the Federal here, 65 grain, um, Hydroshocks, did pretty well with those. And um, I've got some uh, standard uh, 32 uh, range ammo. I'm actually out of it at the moment because I shot the last of my um, white box um, before we had this conversation. But, you know, for what it is, you know, I expected to have issues out of the gun. And it didn't. It shoots 32 just fine all day long. 
you know, it's not a bad little gun. Um, like I say, it has limitations as far as, you know, how comfortable it is for me to shoot for a long time because of the, the, the fact that it is so light. I feel a little bit more in my hand. But it's not that bad, and I think as far as if you wanted to shoot a box from time to time to practice, I don't think it would be that bad at all. So, it's a very simple gun, but it does exactly what it's supposed to do. And within the range that it should be used, it has a fairly good degree of accuracy. It's just, you know... And, and being specific, when I talk about that range, um, literally, if I'm shooting at... at what I call defensive range, you know, like 21 feet, the rounds are already tumbling at that range. So this is definitely not something you're going to want to uh, shoot at beyond that range and expect any kind of accuracy because with it, it's hard enough to do at 21 feet. But you can get some decent rounds on paper, um, but you will notice that even at that range, they're already starting to become unstable. So what's it like to carry the P32 as your carry gun? Well, in a word, easy. Okay, This is a true pocket gun. And I know people who carry guns like this just in their pocket by themselves. I really don't recommend that in, under any circumstances. Now, this does have a pretty, you know, solid trigger. It's five pounds, but you feel that double action it takes a lot of purpose and intent to pull the trigger so it's pretty safe inherently but i don't like my trigger being exposed in a pocket or i wouldn't recommend it being exposed in a purse something can you know get wedged between there or whatever and then there's always that possibility of an accident so if you're going to carry it um, in your pocket i recommend get you know some kind of a you know sticky or something like this desantis gun hide lots of other people make little holsters like this it'll just go directly down the pocket you can just draw out of this and the whole thing is covered you know so to me this is a time when the sticky is is the hero because that's the easiest possible way to carry something like this now if you insist on carrying it you know on the waistband if you have to have your gun that way well, there's tons and tons of options, you know, single clip holsters, stuff like this. You know, you can carry the gun any way you want to. But to me, when you put this gun into a holster like this on the waistband, well, you're kind of defeating the purpose because you've added all this bulk. You know, the holster is way bigger than the gun. And so now you got something on the waistband. And yeah, sure, you've got a, a place to draw from. But as tiny as the gun is, to me, why not take advantage of the fact that it's so tiny and just conceal the entire gun in your pocket and have the comfort to go with it? Well, so overall impressions of the P32, you know, I think it's not a bad little gun. Like I said, when I first started looking at kel um, it's one of those things where everyone I'd ever talked to has had nothing but bad things to say about kel -Tec. And I have experienced some quality issues, you know, mainly cosmetic and such with some kel I've looked at over the years. But they seem to be pretty reliable. All the kel I've got to shoot, I've got to play with, have seemed like they're pretty reliable um, firearms. If you're looking for something that is very small, if your whole focus is, I want a tiny gun that I know I'll carry with me because it's easy to do so, then this is something you might want to look at. Now keep in mind the 32 ACP cartridge is not the most powerful thing in the world. Um, that's never stopped me from carrying it. Um, like I say, at close range, um, it's a fairly accurate cartridge. It doesn't take long for it to start becoming um, way, way less than that. But to me, um, I feel good about carrying 32. That's not my. It's not my first choice. Really, the smallest cartridge that I normally carry that I feel good about is 38 Special. But I carried 32 for a number of years, and I felt perfectly fine doing so. Um, the MSRP on this gun is $360, um, which seems like a lot for a small gun. But as you've probably noticed in the gun world, when you scale things down, uh, I guess it's kind of like packaging in the grocery store. Whenever they scale anything down, you pay more for it. So for whatever reason... You know, this is going to be in that $360 range, which compared to some of the other guns that they make is kind of high. But I think that this gun is pretty well made overall. The trigger is pretty good overall. And um, 
this isn't a gun that if I put it in my pocket, I'd be afraid that it wasn't going to work. So it seems like it's been pretty functional, reliable up to this point. So anyway, if, um, if that's in your budget and you're after a pocket gun and you want something that is the lightest, undeniably one of the simplest things you can carry, well, it's double action only. It's got a decent trigger and it's not picky about ammo. Uh, and at 360, it's not really that ridiculous when you look at some of the other guns that are small and what they go for. So anyway, it's not a bad choice if that's what you're after. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. As always, we thank you for being with us. We'll be back very soon with another video for you. So until that time, everyone, please stay safe and have a great day. Thank you.